I wanted to come up again and, and share with you a little bit of how we're taking some of what Brent just shared, um, which maybe some of you say, okay, that's great, that's far in the future. The stuff is happening right now. I'm serious, like this is the most exciting time to be in this industry, I really believe. Not just what Donna and Michael were talking about, what Brent's talking about, what we talked about yesterday. This is for us to kind of reimagine right now. And I have with me the uh, Google Cardboard that we sent out uh, with the New York Times, and I'll talk about that uh, in a few minutes. Um, we have a couple of them here. Hopefully many of you got to see the high-end headsets of the films that Mini created. Uh, we created two different films, um, and what we did is looked at virtual reality as an opportunity. It's not the be-all, end-all, as Brent said. It's a new way of communicating. It's a new way of trying to engage with someone. To me, the way I look at it most simply is, with so many uh, opportunities right now to connect with somebody through um, whatever medium, most people are actually looking at two or three things at once. And we all know about that, and so I'm not gonna do a whole uh, speech on that. But one of the cool things about VR is, you are singularly focused. So whether it's this cardboard thing, and I still laugh to myself that like, the future of technology is cardboard. And it's like, no, it's not. It's actually a simple, smart way of actually getting this out there to the masses. But we will laugh about this um, in a year, probably. And it's really cool to see technology evolve. What we wanted to do is share with you, um, I want to give a little bit of the how because if you want to explore doing things in VR, and many took the leap to do it, we're, uh, we pride ourselves in trying to be innovative. Um, sometimes we take a misstep and that's okay, but our target audience are creative individuals like Miley and all of you, um, but also uh, we want to try and push ourselves to keep learning. And so we set out, um, it took many months, um, to create two VR films. Hopefully you got to see them, but if not, you'll still have a chance. And I want to bring up uh, now the director and the producer of the company that created these for us. And they're going to talk about the process, like the how do you do this kind of stuff. But the good news is this stuff is being figured out right now. It's a really interesting time to explore. And uh, please welcome to, this, to the stage the guys from Bipolar ID. The board and Jose. So Gaborg is the director, and Jose is a producer, and um, feel free to ask some questions and so forth, but this is your chance, without spending all the money that we did, to figure out how to do this <laughs> thing. Yeah. Thanks, Lee. Thanks for the introduction. Hi, everyone. Um, so if, um, as Lee mentioned, Bipolar ID is a virtual reality production company. Uh, so we do everything from creative to production to post-production. And uh, in uh, February, Mini approached Gavorg as a director to uh, create these two films. Um, and we realized that we had to start from a blank canvas. And we developed creative that can be shot in 360. We also developed the camera rigs that we'll show you a little later that shoot 6K per camera, and uh, it's a pretty impressive rig that we'll show you guys. And we also had to do a proprietary software to stitch it all together. Um, and it was something that hasn't, had not been done uh, in this cinematic fashion um, until we did it. Um, and we were very grateful for uh, Mini to give us this opportunity to uh, play with all these toys and put it together. and. Uh, make it happen. Hopefully some of you guys watched it and enjoyed the films. Uh, I'm going to pass it over to Gavorg, who's going to walk you through the process of uh, how we uh, put these films together. Thanks, Jose. Um, so we started with a lot of unknowns. Um, and here's pretty much everything that we need to solve. When we started the project at the time, there was no VR film that had ever been done before that had a narrative structure to it. Nothing had been done before that had the storyline, characters, and dialogue. Um, and as Brent was talking about, uh, there hadn't been anything where you could watch for a prolonged period of time from five minutes upwards to 10 minutes. Um, and the biggest question was, well, how do you create that? Next question was, 
for filming, no camera rigs existed for creating the cinematic quality virtual reality film that Mini was after, um, and we all were striving towards. Um, and no computers existed for handling this data uh, coming out of each of the individual cameras. And lastly, no stitching software existed for merging these individual images together to create one seamless film. So as Jose said, we li literally started from a blank page. And um, so pretty much here's what we did. Uh, for the narrative, we wrote and developed a creative specifically designed for VR. VR is completely different from narrative for uh, traditional format. So anything that works in traditional format does not apply to VR. So you have to start from scratch. Um, and the films that we wrote, Real Memories and Backwater, were specifically for VR. Um, and Real Memories is about um, a character who's going back in time through his own memories and Backwater is a heist film uh, of an underground, uh, undercover cop's last kind of heist mission. So um, the story unfolds in, not in a single place, but in 360 degrees all around us. And we use that as an opportunity for storytelling to, to expand storytelling and plant it in other areas. So if when, when the viewers watch the film, every time they watch it, they find something new because um, there's all of these hidden Easter eggs and elements from the story that are everywhere around the film. Um, in one scene, for example, you'll find a, a calendar uh, on a wall and photographs on a bookshelf that keep changing as the time goes by, and you can see the dates changing and the years changing, and those are all information that helps the story. Um, so that's the, um, that's the structure of the narrative. Um, once we really went through, there's a lot of elements, but to kind of get to it is once the narrative was created, once the scripts were designed for VR, the next question was, well, well, how do you film it? How do you create a cinematic film? We didn't want to create anything that just an experience. We wanted a film in 360 degrees. So here's um, what we came up with. Um, and this is a um, Red Dragon um, VR camera rig. It's um, nine cameras. Um, each one shoots about 6K footage. And traditional content have a hard time handling 4K. And we have nine of them, um, each one shooting 6K. So there was no computers to handle this data um, that existed because the total uh, constructed resolution of these cameras are 54K. And to put it into real words, that's six IMAX screens put together. It's massive. So our team actually built a computer system to handle this, a supercomputer system for this. And um, the next stage was to actually merge the images together to create one seamless composition. Um, and there was nothing out there before, so our team actually wrote a software to do that, specifically for Mini. Um, and um, we have a video actually to show you how it works. Um, let's roll the video, if you can. So it starts off with individual images assembled together, top, uh, the camera sits on a tripod, so it's a black hole. We reconstruct that. Um, we add layers of computer-generated graphics and images, color correction uh, to create the cinematic look, and there's the um, combined image um, and scene from the film. So we call that um, the bipolar stitch. Um, it's our custom software solution. Um, you plug the cameras in, you press a button, and it stitches everything for you. Um, here's this final image um, from it. Um, it's 360 directional, true, with no black holes, nothing. We solved all the questions that people had. Um, here's another image from the other film. Um, like we said, cinematic quality. It's a film in 360 degrees. Um, and that's a still image from it. Um, so we start with all these questions. And by the end, to summarize, we wrote and developed concepts specifically for VR that work um, only for that format and maximize its potential. We've developed camera systems for filming in cinematic 360 degree video. Uh, we've built computers to process all that massive data that comes out from it. And we've written a custom software um, to create these images and merge them into a single image together. And when the Mini actually released, um, right now it is considered the highest quality live action film to date by the industry. 
and um, nothing like this had ever been done before to this quality, um, the way it works, and and you can watch it for 10 minutes. People have watched both of them after each other for twice, for 20 minutes, and they feel comfortable with it. So this is um, kind of some, you know, some, some really cool uh, place that we've got, um, really cutting edge. Um, yeah, so, cool. So thanks, Gavorg. Uh, really cool stuff. This is actually a chart that I think is really cool. Um, this is, uh, we got this from a, a group of neuroscientists that did the study, and they, they tested to see what um, the emotional engagement was for an, an audience watching VR versus traditional content. So if you can see the chart on the top, uh, that's the emotional engagement on, when you're having a VR experience. It, it's much higher than traditional content, and it stays constant versus, versus uh, traditional content, which takes a dip. So that's something that's... Uh, Really exciting for us because, like Lee said earlier, you are engaged. You are con you are in the space and um, you're fully engaged in it. Yeah, and this is for mini. So pretty much, this is specifically this is, this for is the mini films the that mini we did. Films. The audience watched regular and virtual. So um, cool. And I want to show you guys another chart that we have. So this is next year. They're projecting that we'll have at least 50 million people uh, watching content in uh, with their headsets. By the year 2018, it's going to be 180 million. And so we are, we are glad that we got to work with Mini, and we were able to solve all these problems ahead of time. So now you guys don't have to worry about that, because now it's set up. And now we can go out there and we can make some really cool content starting tomorrow. So we're the production company that can put it together, but we need you guys, the marketers, to help push it. And um, you know, we want to thank Lee. We want to thank everybody who came out for, for their time. And uh, yeah, that's all. Well, Lee will tell you more about what's going on currently also with the mini and the, some. Cool. So right. I want to thank these guys for coming up. If we can give them a quick round of applause. Um, what's interesting, hopefully, as an example beyond VR, is we're all hopefully in the next year going to have an opportunity to explore something. Donna's taken some leaps out there, uh, she talked about. And we're all going to come across a moment in time where maybe there's a project that's brought our way or something that doesn't quite fit into the buckets that we have now. Um, all I can say is take the leap. Um, you all have come here for a reason. You're ahead of your competitors just by coming here. Um, but don't just go home and then you know take some notes and tweet something out and all that kind of stuff. Take the leap. And this is a leap that we had to take at Mini. Uh, this was definitely a, a big, uh, not only expense in terms of dollars, but also a time commitment, and also a challenge to ourselves to say, um, what could this lead to? We kind of threw out even traditional metrics of ROI. We do look at engagement, and we look at um, what's happening in terms of views and so forth. But we also took this as an opportunity to say, don't make us a product demo. A lot of people are doing VR right now, and they're doing these as demos. Um, we did this as a narrative uh, and hired these talented guys and their firm to bring it to life. The other thing in terms of taking a leap is you're going to have to trust somebody. And so uh, we trusted these guys, and they delivered. Um, trust your partners. Allow them to do things. Allow them to trip once in a while. These guys tripped when you have to put the camera down and then look in 360 degrees, and the director actually has to get out of the way or he's in the shot. Um, so they're tripping, running out of the scene. But they came up with a good solution. They actually made their crew some of the extras in the film, so that was kind of cool. Um, but if you get a chance to look at these, you'll actually see we actually are telling a little bit of a product story as well. We have a system called Mini Connected, which brings you inside the car. And at a couple of points in the film, uh, people are inside uh, a Mini motoring around, and we bring them into the connected system. And the connected system is all about innovation and technology. So we thought VR would be a great way to tell that story, and it is. Um, the challenge now, this chart uh, that we saw before in terms of distribution and adoption is great. Maybe it's right, maybe it's not right. but uh, the thing that Cardboard has done is it's put it into more people's hands. And so we as a brand have to figure out, okay, we're doing these films, that's cool, how are we going to get it out there? So we looked and we talked to partners. 
Um, uh, it's interesting how few partners are kind of even able to handle a question like this. I think it's a buzzword, you know, for some. of like, yeah, VR, and yeah, yeah, we can do some stuff, and we'll do an event, and you can put headsets there. Like, okay, that's interesting. Um, but we ended up working with three different partners. Um, as we do at Mini sometimes, we kind of focus on a few partners. Uh, the first was uh, with Google and YouTube, and we had one of the first VR films on the masthead of Google, so that got us a lot of impressions. The second is we teamed up with Fast Company and realized they were uh, really a credibility source, and they wrote an entire piece uh, that was uh, funded and sponsored by us where they talked about VR and where it's going. It's actually a 50-page um, kind of booklet, if you will, that I think will be looked back on in five or 10 years as well. And they have a list of their, what they call the 1,000 most creative people. So they sent it out to each of those people, and those people are now talking about this. And we sent them an opportunity to see our films. And then the last piece, which literally just happened this weekend, is the New York Times um, stepping forward and distributing literally one million pair of these cardboard goggles to their subscribers, and they'll be also distributing them to their digital subscribers as well. So this is getting into people's hands now, and they're able to see it. And the New York Times created a film as well, which is a very, very powerful piece. It's called Displaced. Um, they've gone into refugee camps with these VR films, uh, these uh, cameras and so forth, and literally have shot films through the eyes of uh, three refugee children. It's an amazing experience. You watch these films, uh, NYT VR is the app, and you literally are watching and you have your headphones on and you can hear helicopters and you look up and you see them and then you see these food drops that are happening and people are running out to get food. And This is an incredibly powerful um, medium that actually brings you into an experience. So I love the... Um, the notion of the chart, the emotional uh, um, engagement, but also the thought that don't take what you already do and, you know, 30 seconds a minute, how much? That's not what this is about. It's about bringing you into an experience and for products and brands and um, others that are trying to communicate, I haven't seen a medium that brings you into an experience in this way. So a lot more to come in this area. It's not going to get rid of other mediums, um, but it is a really powerful engagement tool. And these guys have been a pleasure to work with. So thank you very much.